Well, welcome to the Star Tribune. Thank you so much for coming here today. Well, I'll start, uh, I'll start with you, Dave, in the end. Uh, just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and the reason you're running. Well, thanks again for having us today. Appreciate the opportunity. I'm uh, running again uh, for some of the same reasons I ran the first time. I grew up in a family where my father was an educator for a long time, and public education is really important to our family. And I wanted to do some public service, so that was one of the reasons that I ran. And I saw an opportunity for me to maybe add some value on the construction projects because I have a lot of experience in big projects. I worked on the Amico cleanup, and that was kind of a collaborative process, so I saw some opportunity there on, on these high school construction projects. Uh, I feel like I have more work to get done, some things that we haven't finished. Part of it is school construction. Part of it is the academy deployment. Part of it is just sort of this increase in rigor that I'd like to see us sort of get through, and uh, I'll keep it brief. So hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about some of those items. Yes. Um, I'm Tony Billings, and I the reason I am interested in running for school board is I've spent 22 years as a teacher in this district. I retired, um, this is my second year of full retirement, and um, see this as an opportunity to still be involved in something that I'm very passionate about. Um, I care a lot about education in this community. This is my community. My grandchildren are entering the school system. My children are in it. And so um, I see this as an opportunity for me to give back to the community and um, just to be involved in another level of something that I've spent my life doing. So. I'm Debbie McCuller and I'm running for school board because I'm old and I retired last year and I know that if you don't have another goal in mind that you just die. So having spent 37 years in the school system, I grew up here in Casper, was a student, my kids went through the system. Um, I am running because I think kids need a voice on the board and um, I think there's a lot of things that we are doing that is driving good teachers out of the classroom, um, that is lowering expectations for our kids, and because I have very broad experience having um, served with the state on the YCAS and the PAWS and, and having been a reviewer for Common Core through the National Council of Teachers of English, um, I think that I've got a lot of knowledge that will help the board as we go through this Common Core and next generation science standards and charter schools and all the things that are going to be facing us in education. So let's talk about some goals and, and what your agenda would be going in. Tony, we'll start with you. What are the top three things you'd want to accomplish in your term as trustee? Um, I am interested in I would like to see things become more unified. I, I feel like teachers have a strong voice. I think students have a strong voice. And I think the community has a strong voice. And I would like to see those voices united. So I would really like to improve just communication amongst the different um, stakeholders, if you will. Um, I would also like to see students really be the focus of our education. I feel like there's a lot of, um, I think Neutrona County School District has very high standards. And I think that's an awesome thing. I would like to make sure that kids are in the focus for that and that what's going on in the classrooms is in the focus as well. And probably my third goal would be to just learn and grow as a person because I, as I stated before, would like to be involved on another level with education than what I've previously been able to do. Okay. Well, my first goal is student achievement, of course. Um, I think we've lowered expectations, but I hate the fact that our kids' worth is based on test scores. And I think there are things that are much more important. When I talk to business people in the community, they want people that are there, that work hard, uh, that you know are able to work with others. And that has nothing to do with how good of a test taker you are. So uh, that would be my first goal. I believe that for the last many years, um, classroom teachers, Kids have not been represented to the board in an um, enlightening way. I think that uh, there's kind of a, a layer in between so that the board doesn't always get uh, the true story of what happens in the classroom, and I think my 37 years there will help. I believe that we become very top-down and that that's not a good way to do business. Uh, and then thirdly, I would like to involve the community, perhaps in, in having community meetings. And whether that means we go to them or 
you know, go to the Rotary or we go over to the Senior Citizens um, Center, but wherever we can meet people, some community meetings, because I think that we need to have a voice with the legislators who are really um, changing our classrooms. Yeah, I, the three goals that I have is really related to two items that are kind of in process and one that's new. Uh, one would be to finish the construction of the high schools and do that in a way that uh, is an effective expenditure of our public funds and, and is fair and, and good quality construction, so that would be one. The second is the deployment of the academies, which is the curriculum part of those new high schools. And you know, I know we'll get a chance to talk further about the academies, but why I think that's so important for student engagement and uh, and maybe I can talk a little bit about boys and my hope that we can get their improvement with the academies. And the third one is student expectations, and that's something that we just kicked off at our last board meeting. It's something I've been talking with uh, Superintendent Hopkins about for the last year. And it's this idea of not only do we have to sort of increase expectations academically, but this idea of a prepared graduate, we need to address some things that I think have slipped over time because we've gotten so consumed by graduation rate, and that's allowed us to sort of lower our expectations for students when it comes to attendance, homework, or the number of classes they take as a senior. We have a fair amount of kids that really don't take very heavy senior loads, and that doesn't prepare you for the next step. Uh, we don't have an attendance policy that, to me, encourages attendance. We have too many kids missing, even for athletics and that type of thing. And we don't have a homework policy, so what's happened over time is because of pressure maybe from parents or administrators, you have this idea that you can turn homework in almost any time as a high school student and you can still get credit for it. And to me, that doesn't really mimic the real world. So this idea of student expectations is something that the board just talked about at our last meeting. It would be a new uh, collaborative process that would include teachers, administrators, board, and community members. And they're going to tackle over the next 6 to 18 months this idea of, of student expectations and do we have the right policies in place to uh, really prepare our kids for the next step. Next question, we'll start with Debbie. Uh, what's been your own experience in the district as a student uh, and or a parent? As a student, I hated school. I was pretty disengaged, and it probably had more to do with me than, than what was happening in, in the schools. Um, I graduated from the University of Wyoming, so I must have been prepared in spite of uh, my lack of interest. Um, as my kids went through school, I felt like uh, they got a good education, they got basics, um, they know how to problem solve, and they're both successful as adults. So uh, I found teachers to be real cooperative, um, and administrators at that time too. Dave? Well, I didn't attend here, I attended at Glen Rock. I'm a herder, so I bleed purple, I guess. Um, <laughs> which helps at times, since I don't bleed green or orange, right? <laughs> um, my kids have all had a good experience. I've had one graduate, I've got two that are in school. Um, we went through Verda, Centennial, and K-Dub. At the time, they were all sort of our neighborhood schools, even though we've moved a little further away from KW now. Uh, but like most parents, you know, your kids have interactions that are not always ideal, and. And so sometimes I call up and I say, I'm calling as a parent, not as a school board member. Uh, and, you know, because you have concerns. So I would say when you have this big a system with 12,000 students interacting with all those teachers, you're always going to have rub points every day, right? So you're never going to have a completely positive experience. But I think overwhelmingly the district has teachers that work really hard, administrators that are committed, coaches that love kids. And in my experience, has generally been positive. Um, I actually did go through Natrona County School District the majority of my um, school career. I spent a couple years, my parents moved back and forth, but we always ended up back here in Casper. And so my experience as a student was I loved school. I was one of those kids that I think school is made for. I was a round peg in a round hole. <laughs> and um, my own students, my two children that have gone through this, um, I actually have four stepchildren as well, but my two children that have gone through Natrona County School District both have had fairly positive experiences. Um, of course, as a parent, I'm very involved, so there were times when things were not ideal, and um, I always felt like I could approach the teachers. I thought they were very willing to listen. Um, most of the administrators that I encountered were that way as well. Um, my students are very, both of my kids are very high achieving students. My daughter's currently attending Casper College. I'm a graduate of University of Wyoming, so 
I guess I'm just a Wyoming girl and um, really feel like Natrona County School District, generally speaking, has been a positive thing. I think there's always room for improvement in any system. So, um, and I also know that you can't please everybody all the time. And so sometimes change is difficult and um, but necessary, so. Dave, I'll start with you on this question. Uh, let's talk about the academy. Do you support the academy-based learning concept? And if not, why not? If so, why is it important? Yeah, I do support the academy-based learning. Um, I support it as it's currently configured as a choice for high school students. I think the intent is to try to give a broader set of choices to kids so they can focus on electives. I'll take one piece of it. The idea that you can take a focused set of electives that might help you dig deeper into a subject. It could be a kid that takes automotive and he takes automotive one or two early and then he gets to do maybe some sort of more detailed automotive project as a junior or senior. Uh, it's not just career or technical education, even though I think that's a really important part of it, but these other aspects too to help kids be more focused. Now, I, some criticism has been, well, what about the student that's just academic focused, and wants to go to college, wants to take as much math and science, and it doesn't preclude that. But I think the program allows kids to do maybe some more project-oriented work, some work that's maybe got some interactions with the community and businesses. And I just see it as a, as a real opportunity for kids. Um, again, we, we sort of have this sort of loose collection of electives that people take now because they're not in an academy, and sometimes they don't even take a full set of electives. So I really think it could be positive for, um, for kids that maybe aren't as engaged. I think that's the other thing we're trying to do is get kids more excited about project-based hands-on learning. Uh, and there's also maybe a financial component to it. You know, some of these third level um, classes, like, you know, UCT is an example. <clears throat> it doesn't make financial sense to have that type of automotive um, equipment for a third level automotive class in two places, or to have some of the equipment that we plan on having at this facility. So it just makes sense for it to be a shared facility. And my hope is it will increase the collaboration between all three of the high schools, Roosevelt, uh, Kelly Walsh, and Natrona, by having this facility where they can have their kids go for one or two classes, you know, their junior or senior year, and, and work together. So, yeah, I'm a strong supporter. Um, I also support it as I understand it to be developed, and I know it's still in the, in the infancy stages or middle stages, but um, as it's written and as it's being rolled out, I think it sounds like a good way to engage students. It sounds like a good way to get some kids who maybe are uncertain about exactly what path they want to take to give them an opportunity to explore a couple different pathways. I think it's important that we maintain the same level of you know, rigor for our kids who don't want to go into something like that that are, again, college bound and you know want to continue to take classes that you know will get them forward that goals I think that's really important as well but I do feel like um, it, it offers another way for for students to explore their at that age they they feel very grown up I think high school kids do but I think generally speaking they're not having just had one go through high school I think it would be a really good idea for them to have the opportunity to to explore what they think they want to do Uh, I support the concept, but I really don't know very much about it. Um, I think that Dave's summary probably filled me in on uh, the academy more than I've heard from the teachers. Um, I know that a lot of the teachers that started off working on the academy uh, are not real pleased with where it has gone, and I'm not sure why that's happened. Uh, I worry about logistics. Um, when we take kids from Kelly Walsh and we're busting them over there, what if it's a kid that's an athlete who's over there but has to get on the bus at Kelly at 11 o'clock? You know, I, I guess those things have probably all been worked out, but I, I go back to when, when the board decided we were going to go to middle schools. And um, it was not a community decision, it was a board decision. And, and one of the reasons was it was to cut out on the transitions that kids were moving from one building to another building. And, and it seems to me that we're now turning around and we're adding more transitions. And so I guess I'm concerned about how much time is lost in transporting kids to another building. So, so let's talk about grad rates. And Tony, I'll start with you. Would you consider Natrona County graduation rate, uh, Natrona County's graduation rate, a problem 
If not, why not? And if so, what would you propose to do about it? Um, well, I, I know there's been a lot of discussion about it. I think any time that you don't have, you know, as many kids as possible graduating, I think that's really important. I, um, high school graduation is important, I believe. And so I think that um, building that and increasing that is, is something that the school district and obviously the board should work towards. And I'm hopeful that CAPS will be one solution to that. I agree with what um, Mr. Applegate said earlier regarding homework and just higher standards. And you know, I think it's I think having that atmosphere in high school that says this is important and, and engaging our students so that they believe it's important and continue to to stay engaged and, and graduate. And I think sometimes <coughs> higher expectations actually achieve that. Well, it's kind of like no child left behind, that 100% of the kids are, are uh, you know, going to be proficient. Uh, it would be great if we had a graduation rate of 100%. I think that we can improve it uh, by valuing kids when we have them there. And that means, um, I guess, making uh, learning more student-centered rather than data-driven. And so, uh, I think that if kids are there and engaged and feel valued and important, that they're going to come. Yeah, I think the graduation rate, which is kind of hovering between 75 and 80 percent, is a problem. Uh, I think the, the board recognizes that, and I think our community board, teachers, everyone has higher expectations for us. Um, <clears throat> I think we don't want to lose the other side of that though which is a prepared graduate so I don't want to lower standards or expectations I think there has been a tendency over time to do that to try to increase the graduation rate so I want to sort of up the standards and at the same time increase the graduation rate I think that's a goal we have it's it's a difficult goal but I don't think they're mutually exclusive um, to get kids there you need engagement they need to attend uh, you know there was some work that the district did it was even before I was on the board that kind of connected these dots that you have to have third grade readers you have to learn how to read you guys have been big supporters of that program. You gotta learn how to read so you can then read to learn. Then the next connecting point is you have to get credits as a freshman, meaning a lot of dropouts is because they failed as freshmen. And then the other connection is if kids are engaged in some sort of extracurricular activity, uh, they're most, much more likely to stay engaged in high school. So I think we just need to keep working on those three things. Third grade reading, we got, we're got we starting I think to spend more focus on ninth graders to make sure if we have kids that are falling behind, how do we how do we get them through that freshman year with you know at least seven credits and then try to engage kids to participate in something so they want to come to school because a lot of kids if they come to school for something that they enjoy they'll do the school work um, it's a tough nut to crack uh, the percentage is about the same across the country it's been at 80 percent for about 30 or 40 years it was much lower before that um, people somehow think some people I think think that we used to have higher graduation rates but we've never really as a country had higher than 80 percent but to me we can do better there are districts that do better uh, and we have as a goal right now is 85 percent in our strategic plan and we need to work as hard as we can to try to achieve that this next question we'll start with you why did you think the school bond vote failed and uh, map out what the district should do going forward without those funds hmm. well I think that the board communicated pretty well. They had a lot of community meetings that weren't well attended. So I'm not sure where the community was in all of that. Um, I did not support the bond issue. And I guess part of the problem I have is when I drive by NC and see that big sports facility there, and then hear that the district you know, had some money that they were able to kick in for that. Uh, made me think that maybe we don't utilize funds in the best way and and being in the classroom I think that there are a lot of services that really don't benefit kids but we spend a lot of money on um, in the future uh, I know that there is a community group that is interested in building an Olympic size pool onto the YMCA so I would hope that there could be some collaboration with the district and the city to um, have a world-class facility. Uh, 
And then uh, hopefully the legislature is going to keep, you know, giving us some money and we can look at how we're allocating it and tighten our belts where we need to. <clears throat> School bond bill. Well, ultimately you fail in that type of election because you haven't convinced enough people that it's a good idea. So uh, we didn't do that. Um, the board supported the bond unanimously. Most of us invested our own money to support the bond. I'm disappointed it passed, but I respect the will of the electorate, and you have to move on. I think there was two factors that might have worked against us. Um, one, people got their tax bill right before the election, and most people's local property taxes increased, and their, you know, that was just maybe not good fortune. Um, we also have this com complex construction going on, and a lot of people, even during the bond period, would say, well, why can't you take money from that and apply it to these things? And sort of understanding school construction financing and the fact that it doesn't fund certain enhancements is a complex topic to try to discuss. But, but fundamentally, we just didn't convince enough people that it was a good idea. Uh, I think two aspects of the bond, the safety and the CAPS equipment, are important. We can use our operational funds to fund those over time. We will not be able to do those things as quickly. But, and we may do a little less on each one of those items, but uh, I still believe that the safety features for primarily grade schools and the CAPS equipment are important. Uh, as far as the pools, I'll be honest, I'm a big supporter of uh, all extracurricular activities, including sports. I think they can be really positive. I was, as a University of Wyoming track guy myself, and I'm, I'm just, I, I really think those are, are great things for kids to participate in. We had several hundred pool supporters show up at our board meeting. It was very difficult for us to decide should we include the pools. The polling had suggested that that would maybe be the demise of the bond. I don't know if it was or not, but we made a decision because of the public support we had to include the pools. I believe Natrona uh, is a big high school and they need a pool and I'm going to work to try to look for partnership opportunities and uh, other avenues to try to, um, to try to get them a pool eventually. Um, don't know how we're going to do that, but uh, I believe it's important. I guess the first thing I would want to investigate a little further is exactly why people who didn't support it didn't support it, what specific aspect of it um, the general public was in um, disagreement with or was it just generally the entire idea of it and um, kind of take that information and move forward I think that if um, you know if there wasn't support you know for certain aspects of it then um, perhaps those things should be funded outside of the district um, you know <coughs> community efforts um, I don't know where else money can come from but if it's not something that the um, taxpayers wanted to come from our school district budget or wanted to be sorted under that realm, then um, I would want to investigate other opportunities. Last question, we'll uh, start with Dave. Uh, this is, I guess, for you kind of a kind of a look back and reassessment. Uh, talk about the handling of the skit uh, uh, at the uh, Turner County High School Welcome Back event. Uh, how would you have handled it differently if you could? I would not have handled it differently, but I'll explain how I think we did handle it. Um, first off, I think the skit was certainly inappropriate in a professional setting, um, and it was unfortunate and disappointing. Um, I believe the resignation of the high school principal, I think he did the right thing. Uh, I believe we have a very ethical and skilled and committed superintendent who evaluated all of the issues associated with the skit, uh, including, you know, previous records of those that were involved, um, the nature of the skit, their contractual arrangements, and looking at all of this information, uh, came to a conclusion that was fair and that was supported by the board, and I supported his decisions. Um, from the very beginning, uh, those of us on the board want to be as transparent as we could while still being consistent with personal privacy protections that are under the law. Getting a board like ours to understand that and to deliberate on that and to go through the process that was required probably looked from the outside like we were taking a lot of time, but it was just the nature of the timeline. We were getting information over that whole period. I was pleased that we were able to reach an agreement with the Star Tribune where we did um, present 
uh, information that I think was, uh, again, transparent and allowed the public to understand the, what the conclusions of the investigation were. There was never any doubt that the skit itself was public information from the board's perspective. So it was unfortunate. I don't think it reflects um, on the hard work by so many teachers over at Natrona County and, and good work by administrators over there. Um, but it, it certainly was unfortunate and we need to do better. Tony, what about you? How do you handle the skit situation differently as a member of the board? Um, well, I'm <laughs> glad I didn't have to handle that because I think that was pretty tricky. Um, obviously, the um, skit, you know, I watched a portion of it. I didn't watch it all. I was um, grateful to have the opportunity to be able to see it myself to make my own judgment on it because otherwise I think that's you're just supposing what somebody else thinks is appropriate or isn't. Um, in my opinion, it was inappropriate for the setting with which it was um, and unprofessional. It was would not be something I would want to have participated in as an educator. I think educators are expected to have a higher, we are role models and we are expected to um, behave that way and I always as a teacher tried really hard to, to do that. And so I think there is a higher standard there. I also think we're human beings. And I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of factors that I'm sure the board had to weigh and also the superintendent, um, privacy factors, legal factors that quite honestly I don't know about having not, you know, been in this position before. Um, I feel like, you know, from the information I've read and seen that what was hand done was, was fair. Um, I was, would have liked to have seen a little more information right away. I feel there was a lot of rumors and whatever, and um, you know, I understand that there was, you know, perhaps reasons why things couldn't move quickly. But during that time span, there were so many rumors swirling. This is such a small community, so um, I think, you know, in order to dispel rumors, any time that things can be handled quickly and efficiently, and and again transparently, I think that really helps the public. I agree with the way that the board handled the matter, and I have a lot of respect for Steve Hawkins. He's a man of integrity. So I, um, I have no complaints. I think that the public probably wants to hear all the gritty details. I think the newspaper likes a little controversy uh, now and then. So um, given all of that, I still think that the board handled it well. Next question on uh, charter school. Tony, I'll start with you. Some local parents are seeking to start a charter school to make up for what they feel are deficiencies in how Natrona County challenges gifted and talented students. Uh, how would you assess talented and gifted education in the district, and do you approve of the charter school effort? Um, well, I don't have a lot of information about that. I know that's an initiative, and um, I think that, you know, as a district delving into charter schools as a whole is something that um, is a whole new venue something we haven't done in this district so I think that would be something that would need to be considered I think parents um, you know when parents have a, a good idea that's how school, schools of choice began in this district you know 22 years ago was through parents and teachers with a shared vision and I think that's really powerful I think when people are you know gathered around an idea um, that can be really powerful and if, if there are students that are not receiving what they need then Either the district should work to address that, or you know, if there's a group of parents and a group of teachers that want to try something, then I think that that's something we should look at. I think um, gifted and talented, truly gifted and talented, is a, a different than just a highly advanced student, and I think that that needs to be looked at as well. And it would need to be a consistent way to establish what a gifted and talented student looks like and what sorts of needs they would have. Um, and be in, have enough support for that. But if that were the case, I would support something like that. Okay. I'd be real interesting, interested in hearing what they have to say about it. Um, I can't imagine that their kids are not being um, challenged in our school schools. I think that a lot of money goes towards those top kids. And so, given the fact that we're already a school district of choice, there's lots of different programs. So, I'd want to hear what they have to say, and I'd also want to know how the community feels about it. Personally, I support public schools. So, I think 
Um, in some cases with, for instance, the School of Choice, we have created um, some little pockets of excellence around. And I believe that a child should be able to enter any school in this district and get a top-notch education. So I'm, I'm open-minded about charter schools, kind of like I was dual language immersion and other things. I don't have a preconceived notion on this. Um, I don't feel threatened if there's a group of folks that want to open a charter school. They have to go through a pretty detailed and rigorous process. Uh, and through that time, we'll vet all the issues, and again, they'll have to meet a number of criteria. Um, I don't feel like it really threatens our overall public education system, one charter school. So I'm open-minded. They're going to come before us. Um, I want to kind of stop, though, and talk about what we try to do when parents have interest. I use dual language immersion. You know, that was a program. Parents came to us. We weighed all the positives and negatives. We, we ended up doing a pilot school in Chinese. That's turned out to be really successful, and now we're doing a second program this year, and I think that's addressing, I would call it, your high, you know, advanced kids. Um, I think we do a good job of providing AP classes at the college level over at KDUB. They have the IB program. That said, I know in the last year there were some concerns about some of the gifted and talented programs. So I, I'd like to do two things. I mean, we need to be open to the charter school option, but we also need to listen to those parents that feel like maybe there's been a slight decline in the um, availability or the, the services they've received on this idea of gifted and talented. Um, so this is the type of thing that happens as a board member, right? You have things that you want to address because they're sort of on your agenda, and then you have things that sort of emerge. Um, and I think just we just need to look at it closely. We, we need to look at it from two angles. Is the charter school the right answer, or do we just need to do better on how we're addressing gifted and talented? Um, so I would just approach, approach it from that process perspective, I think. Next question, Debbie, we'll start with you. Let's talk about funding. If Coley's bonus money is not available in the future, what alternative funding ideas do you have? Well, when I responded to the question before, I, I don't think my ideas would raise the money that we're going to need, so I would say that I hope the legislators are working on options because bake sales aren't allowed in schools anymore. Yeah, so that's a really tough question. We've been so fortunate here in Wyoming to have Coley's bonus money to build these schools. And uh, I think it's great you're asking the question because it helps educate the public that this is where our funding for school construction com comes from. It is primarily a state legislature issue, um, and I think they're probably in the process of looking at that. Uh, at the local level, we're able to spend a portion of our operational funds on construction. Um, and we've done that. That's how, how we've paid for some of these enhancements, uh, whether it be, um, you know, the, the gym enhancements that we've done at both high schools, the CTE enhancements, the common space enhancement. So you can do some level of construction um, with your operational funds, but it's designed to be primarily for the operation of the system, right? So they don't want you to use a large percentage of your operational money for construction. We've also been pretty creative in using our major maintenance money to do uh, remodel type work. Uh, Dean Morgan is undergoing a really fantastic kind of rebuilding from the inside out. I encourage you all to go see Dean Morgan. It's really got great bones as a facility and that's why it's being remodeled that way and it's being done under major maintenance. But fundamentally to keep up on building the schools that we would need to build if we grow as we're growing, the legislature is going to have to find an alternate source of revenue if Coley's bonus money uh, continues to decline. Well, I um, don't think you could bake enough cookies to, to build a school because I've seen the bills for those things and they're pretty expensive. I think that, um, you know, as a, a state, we would need to start looking at that, obviously, at the legislative level. And then, you know, I think at the district level, looking at what we are currently spending our money on and starting to you know, prepare for, for that if that's an eventuality we're going to need to deal with because um, just like with your personal budget when you know a certain set of funds is going to dry up you need to start looking at other ways and planning ahead and um, you know I know that we're talking about the high schools overflowing and our community growing and 
Um, we just need to start making a plan for that now rather than waiting until it's an issue that we can't deal with because it's upon us. So. Thanks. Well, that's all my questions. Anybody else? Well, great. Well, we'll give you a chance to make a closing statement and uh, uh, you get a couple minutes and I just talk about talk about why you. And uh, we'll start with Dave. Well, again, thanks for the opportunity today to answer your questions. Um, you know, for me, serving on the school board is something I really enjoy. It's a great opportunity. Again, I think public education is just so important, maybe one of our most important uh, public institutions. Um, I think I'm a problem solver and a collaborator, open-minded, try to come to things with an open mind and then try to listen and work to a solution. Um, knowing that sometimes those solutions aren't going to meet the need of every stakeholder. Um, I'm excited about where we're headed in this district. I think um, new buildings is good, right? It's good to go into a new building, uh, but education is much more than a building. And I feel like the academy concept has the ability to help some kids that need to be more engaged. Um, again, I want to really explore this student expectation initiative that we have going. Um, I'd like your vote next week. I think uh, I'll continue to do a good job. I, th I think the board, um, you know, the fact that I'm chairman this year, that's an internal vote. And so that sort of demonstrates the fact that I've been willing to work with the other board members. I think we have an excellent board in terms of working together and trying to reach collaborate, uh, collaborative solutions. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about the possibility of serving another four years. And I would ask for the public's vote to do that. I appreciate the opportunity to be here as well and just to have um, a chance to, to talk about these issues and I would like to um, to have the opportunity to serve in this way. I feel like this community is my home and has been for a very long time and I want a way to, to give back and I think that I have a lot of skills, um, a collaborator, a hard worker. I, I think that the board currently has some really good members on there. I also really like the superintendent. I think this district is poised to go really great places. I think we have a lot of things going on right now, and that's part of what's motivating me to want to be involved um, at this level. And I think that the opportunity to, to do this kind of work is something that um, I would enjoy. And I really would like to have the chance to be a voice of as a teacher who just came out of the classroom for a year and a half ago as a parent as a grandparent um, you know I have students in the system um, children in this district matter to me and I just would like a chance to bring those skills to the table so. thank you mm -hmm. um, thank you for having us appreciate it I am running because I'm passionate about kids and I would like to be a voice for those kids uh, as a board member. I, again, have, have lots of experience in my 37 years working with Common Core, working on state assessment, leading the Sister City program, taking kids to Taiwan. Uh, I'm uh, an affective person who I think has the reputation uh, in my classroom or had the reputation of being a teacher who valued kids and so I would um, like to add that perspective that affective perspective to the data-driven system that we're working in now so I also would appreciate the vote of the community on Tuesday thank you so much thanks thanks to you all for coming and sitting down with us today appreciate thanks. it